What's going on guys? My name is Jeff and this is Mad Hatter's Reef and today we're going to be talking about equipment for the new reef tank build. What's going on guys? We're back with a another video and if you're new to what we're doing here this is where i talk about everything reef tank related so if you love reef tanks like i do make sure you smash that subscribe button so today we're going to be talking about the equipment that we're putting on the water box aquarium that we've been doing a build series on and if you've missed that so far pause this video there's going to be a link to the playlist that will show you everything up to this point so we'll just sit here and wait But for the rest of us that are up to speed, today we're going to be talking about equipment, more specifically what exactly and when I'm going to be putting it on the Waterbox 70.3. So let's jump over to the computer and take a look. What's up guys, so we're over at Premium Aquatics and we're going to be taking a look at some of the equipment that I'm going to be putting on the Waterbox. You guys know that I work for Premium Aquatics, at least those of you that follow me on pretty much everything that I work on. Know that I do videos for them here on YouTube and every week we're putting out a new video so if you guys want to check those out uh, jump over to the channel. I'll actually put a link in the description below if you want to check that out. So that's where we're going to look at products today at Premium Aquatics and there's some things that I'm dead set on and there's some things that I'm not 100% sure what direction I want to go in and I want your guys' opinion on this. Uh, so if there's something that you think that I should select, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about it, why you think it should be added to the build, and maybe that will be the product that I go with on the water box. So the first product that I have here is the Finex Titanium Heater. Now this is a kit. It comes with the controller and the tube. This is a product that I am very set on this is a, a heater that i use on every single aquarium and the reason being is that it's absolutely bulletproof if you've been in the hobby for any length of time you know that that is probably the most faulty piece of equipment so when it comes to this build this is definitely where i have my mind set as far as heaters go and this is the exact heater that i'll be putting into the water box i have two of them in my 220 gallon and one of them is very old and it's still performing and then one of them is new for a backup that I have set outside the range of the older one in case that one were to fail then the newer one kicks in with the water box I'm just going to be putting one heater in it and we're going to put it to the test next up we have the lighting this is the marine plus for water box this is what comes with the marine plus the AI prime HD light and something that I'm not 100% certain on is I have the colored light that I have for the colored cabinet. I'm not sure if Waterbox is actually um, making sure that those are exactly the same. But where I have the white cabinets, I have the white lighting. So I think that that is actually something that they're trying to coordinate when they're putting these aquariums together for you. This lighting have no experience with it so i'm going to be learning as i go along and this is definitely a light that i'm very interested in because it has the ability to ramp up and what i mean by that is if you're not using all of your greens all of your yellows all of your reds you have them set maybe at 20 24 percent you can extend your violets and your blues beyond 100 percent so you can use that power in this light to boost those colors which is something that i'm very excited about with this build testing these lights out and seeing how well they perform on my reef tank next up as far as returns go i already have my mind set on the s1 ecotech marine vectra now this is a pump that i'm very familiar with i have an m1 on the 220 gallon and even that is a little bit too much for the plumbing system that i have set up the difference between the plumbing system that i have on the 220 and what i have on my water box is substantially different the water box is more of a all-in-one system it has the overflows built into the back of the tank so i'm wondering how much more i can push the vectra 
S1 on this build as opposed to how much I'm pushing it on the 220 gallon. But this is something that I'm 100% certain on what's going on the water box. And in next week's video, I'm actually going to be attaching the Vectra and getting some water in the tank as well as adding the live rock and sand. That's something that we're going to be doing in next week's video. So if you're new to the channel, haven't hit the subscribe button yet, make sure you do. Make sure you hit the bell so you can be notified when that video is uploaded. Next up, so protein skimmers, and this is probably something that I am on the fence about. I am a Aquamax guy. I love their product. I used to uh, work with Aquamax, even though that I no longer do. I still absolutely love their products. And this is one that I'm not 100% familiar with, but it is the Aquamax Conas CO1 in some protein skimmer. Now, the reason that I'm unfamiliar with this one is because I have the Conas Q2 or 3. No, it's a Q3 in my 220 gallon. It's built a little bit different, but it's still the same principle. And this one is just geared down a little bit for those smaller tanks. But ultimately, what I need here is help from you guys to kind of go in what direction. I'm kind of leaning towards a certain skimmer, but I'm not 100% certain on it. So I want to hear what you guys think about the Aquamax Cone S Co. 1. If this is something that you've used, if you have any experience with it, uh, let me know in the description below. Because I'm basically the next three skimmers is something that I am not 100% certain on what direction I want to go. This is definitely one of the ones I'm considering for the water box, but there's also a few other ones that we're going to look at. This is the Aquamax Cone S Q2. Now, this is the step down from the one that I have in the 220 gallon, and it, that one has served me very well for a number of years. And this one would be a little bit overkill for the water box because the water box isn't that much volume. I think total volume is around 69 gallons, and that's including the sump. So something like this might be too much. With that being said... I would love to be able to put a Aquamax in the tank, but the skimmer that I am leaning towards at this time is the NIOS Quantum 120 Protein Skimmer. And the reason being is it's a very sleek looking skimmer. And from what I've experienced and have seen on the internet, that this is a very, very high performing skimmer. And I'd love to give it a shot in the water box. Uh, Waterbox does sell these on their website, and you can buy them in addition to whatever package that you end up picking up. They recommend them. Uh, and it's a skimmer that I've always wanted to take a look at. I have no experience with it, but uh, there's quite a few people that have looked at these that have videos out on YouTube, and it's definitely a skimmer that has piqued my interest. So I want to hear from you guys. What skimmer should I put on the Waterbox Aquarium? Leave a comment down below and tell me why you think it should be the one that I go with. The one thing I will say about skimmers is as far as, you know, what we're putting on the water box aquarium, this isn't something I need to decide on today. So as far as equipment, I definitely need the heater. The heater needs to happen immediately. I already have the S1. The S1 I'm going to be hooking up and that's going to be in next week's video. As far as the lighting, the lighting is here and all I need to do is hook that up. But during the cycling process of this tank, the lights don't need to be on. And that would be more of an aesthetic for me just to be able to see what's going on in the tank. Even though there's not going to be a whole lot of anything going on in the tank. We don't have to have those on hand, but we do just because they came with the tank. But as far as skimmers go, you can wait to three months before you put a skimmer into a new setup. And what you're doing with that is you're allowing the tank to kind of dirty up a little bit. Because when you start with dry rock, uh, more specifically, the tank is very clean. And it takes a little while for that bacteria to really build up and be at levels that is going to help create a stability in your tank. So skimming isn't really something that I'm 100% worried about starting right off. I'll just stick with water changes once the tank is cycled. And eventually, once we need a little bit more oomph in the cleaning of the water, that's when we're going to get the skimmer. So this is going to do two different things for you. One, you don't need to skim right in the beginning unless you have some really dirty rock that you're putting in the tank. Um, there's not going to be any fish in the tank. There's not going to be any vertebrates. There's no feeding that's going on. There really isn't a huge need for that. It takes a little while for the tank to build up to a point 
where it needs skimming. The other portion of that is the cost associated with a skimmer. A skimmer is a very important piece of a reef tank. There are setups out there that you can not have a skimmer, but it dramatically reduces the needed maintenance in the tank when you have a skimmer. It reduces, it doesn't you know, remove the need for water changes, and it's really something that's going to keep the water in the tank clean. And we're gonna wait on it due to the fact that it's not 100% needed right off the bat. You can buy one. If you have the money to do that, that's great. Uh, buy it, set it up, run it. But if you wanna wait a little bit, due to you know kind of stretching out the finances which is my position i don't want to buy an inferior you know low cost skimmer because i'm trying to do it all at once i'd rather buy a high quality skimmer you know a month or two down the road and then put it in the tank because you know you're not uh, absorbing all that cost up front and lastly we need to talk about water movement when we're cycling the tank this is also something that can wait it's not something that can wait two months uh, it's something that you know during the cycling process isn't 100% necessary. Now, depending on how you cycle your tank, it could be a week or it could be a month. So the way in which I'm going to cycle this tank is relatively quick. So this is something that we're going to need. Unlike the skimmer, I wouldn't wait two to three months to add something like this. You really need to get that water moving pretty much from the beginning. It's going to eliminate a lot of dead spots and it's going to help your tank in the cycling process. It's going to help your tank uh, make sure that it's getting enough oxygen exchange in the water. And this is something that I'm probably going to wait a week or two to add to the tank, but I wouldn't push it. This is something that you probably should buy up front. What I'm looking at for water movement in this tank is either the MP40, which is what we're looking at right here. Obviously, substantial cost. It is a high dollar value. This is pretty much the best that you can buy as far as powerheads go. I'm torn between the MP40, which I think is way too much for this tank, but I'm able to dial it back because it is a DC powerhead, or the AI Neuro five powerhead now this is a little bit more of a budget friendly powerhead and it's somewhere in between the mp40 and the mp10 so it's really an interesting powerhead also the fact that it is ai being able to control both the lighting and the water movement on one app is going to be a benefit what do you guys think should i go with the vortec mp40 or the ai neuro 5 Leave a comment down below. Let me know. All right, guys. So that is the equipment that I'm looking at for the new reef tank build. I want to hear you guys' opinion on some of this stuff. Let me know what you think, what I should go with down in the description below. It's important to me that you guys kind of give me your feedback because you're going to be looking at this tank as much as I am. And I'm not really worried about the financial end of it on this build. You know, that's something that obviously not everybody has a... Uh, position that they can take on a build. I'm also interested in hearing from you guys on equipment that I haven't talked about in this video. So if there's something that you would rather, a different direction that you'd rather see me go in, leave a comment down below. Let me know. This is a tank that I kind of want to get out of my comfort zone. Although a lot of the equipment that I've talked about is stuff within my comfort zone, I really want to kind of push the envelope with this tank even though it's a smaller tank uh just to kind of experience some different things in this hobby all right guys that's going to do it for today's video i want to thank you for joining me thank you for all the support and everything that you guys do for me here at mad hatter's reef at mystery reef box and at saltwateraquariumradio.com thank you and i'll see you next week right here in the brand new video special thanks to all the patreon supporters that have made this video possible yeah, yeah, yeah.